At the heart of my setup are two MacBook Pros and a Mac Mini. The laptop on the left is a 15 inch Intel MacBook Pro that I use for all my software development work for my employer. I prefer to keep a clear separation between my work and personal devices. On the right is my personal 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro with 32GB of RAM and 1TB of storage. This setup is probably overkill for most, but it is super convenient and makes editing videos a nice experience. It brings back the SD card reader and has a built in HDMI port along with multiple USB C ports allowing me to run multiple monitors. Prior to the M1 MacBooks, I did most of my video editing on a cool looking custom built PC that I spec'd out, but it took up a ton of space and I didn't like jumping between Windows and Mac OS, so I let it go. The Mac Mini was used in isolation for handling cryptocurrency transactions, but I'm shifting all my investments back to stocks, so I'll probably not have this much longer. My MacBook Pro connects to a CalDigit hub, giving me easy access to multiple external SSD drives where I store B-roll footage and video backups. It's also how I connect to Ethernet for faster uploads, and it allows me to connect to my main monitor. My go-to monitor is a LG 34-inch ultra-wide IPS display. I used a 40 inch 4K TV for a while, but I realized I didn't use the top or the bottom of the screen much. This widescreen monitor provides plenty of space for editing videos and allows me to have two coding windows open and a browser open at the same time. I keep my laptop open to use the display for Slack, Chrome tools, emails, and other things. The monitor is mounted to an industrial black pipe stand that I built. I used acetone to remove the black coating and then sealed it with an acrylic clear coat for a nice rustic vibe that matches other tables I built for my studio. Don't judge me for my love of organized chaos. The desk service is made from two unfinished 61 inch by 29 inch IKEA Gerton solid beechwood tabletops. I cut one of them down to use for the monitor stand and used an Osmo Pollock smoke finish for that aged look. I use the leftover wood to make other tables. The wood is mounted to a fully Jarvis standing desk with alloy legs to match the steel pipe look of my studio. Does any of this improve my productivity? Not really. Not sure why everyone likes to talk about their productivity desk. The secret to productivity is to plan first and type faster. A desk is is just a desk. In addition to great sound, these Masters and Dynamic MH40 headphones provide a nice vintage aesthetic, but I really only use them for video editing and video recording. I've tried listening to music while coding, but I find it too distracting. I really like the Apple Magic Keyboard, but I got tired of having three on my desk, so I opted for an MX Keys Mini. I juggle multiple Magic Mice because it's hard to beat the smooth side scrolling from a simple side swipe. I replaced my original desk with two comfortable leather chairs and an old ship's wheel that reminds me of my days out on the water and my childhood dreams of finding a lost treasure ship. Hidden down below is a glass float from an instrument pod sent to the bottom of the Mariana Trench for underwater research. I enjoy creating landscape paintings, but it's hard to find the time and even harder to find a place to put them. Not the typical background for a software engineer's YouTube studio, this wall is a representation of my past, present, and future dreams little gems of my adventures and interests. A principle I live by, I learned when my first bonsai died. My neighbor and mentor who had spent weeks helping me prepare and transplant the bonsai told me not to worry about the failure. Just grab it by the trunk and throw it over the hill, learn from it, and move on. Don't look back. Many of these items have roots in the American gold rush. The history is fascinating, and I enjoy gold panning and spent years metal detecting as a hobby. I always wanted to find a huge gold nugget. This is a copper nugget spray painted gold, a reminder of what could be out there waiting for me. I designed and built the sign from wood left over from when I dreamed of becoming a wood carver. I guess you could say I'm a multi-potentialite. I have way too many interests. Nope, I'm not a hunter though I really like to shoot animals with a camera. This is a Mythosar skull, the symbol of the planet Mandalore. Yep, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. My son made this pendant for me and my wife made these larger ones. I light the background with two Nanlite Pavo tubes and all of these little accent lights are Aperture MC RGB lights that I can control from an app. For key lights, I use two Aperture 120D Mark II lights with large softboxes 
one for each camera setup. I've tried a lot of shotgun and hypercardioid mics, but settled on the Shure SM7B along with acoustic treatment to cut down on room noise and echoes. The SM7B runs into a Mix 3 Pre Mark II which has really clean preamps. From there, the audio goes into a Sony A7S III camera with a 16-35 f4 lens. The video feed is sent to this Atom Mini Extreme ISO that allows me to switch between camera angles and control what appears on the teleprompter. This second camera is is also an A7S III with the 16 to 35 f 2.8 lens. I went with the Sony cameras because they handle low light really well. This one doubles as a secondary camera and is the camera setup I use for shooting B-roll along with my other favorite lens, the Sony 24mm 1.4 G Master. Sometimes I work off bullet point outlines for videos. Other times it's helpful to write a script when there's a lot of specific details I want to cover. In some ways the teleprompter makes it easier because I can quickly glance at notes without looking away. But the actual scripting is harder because I have to read while trying to act normal like I'm not reading. I split the HDMI signal going from my laptop to this monitor, so anything I put on this monitor will also appear on the teleprompter. That way, if I'm doing a video meeting, I can use this camera as a webcam and move the meeting app onto the teleprompter and actually look at whoever it is I'm talking to. And they don't have to watch me staring off into nowhere. My favorite thing about the teleprompter is that I can see myself when I'm making faces and pose for thumbnails. All of this gets routed in into the Atom Mini Extreme ISO where I add a little audio EQ and then save the recording to an SSD drive. It's taken a while to figure this all out. I bought and sold a ton of gear, but this setup now streamlines things and makes recording and editing videos much more efficient, which is super important because I have a wife and five kids that also need my attention. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at my non-productive, productive workspace. If you're thinking about becoming a programmer, you should watch this video because I share everything I wish I knew someone would have told me when I first started out. Lates.